This video is the first of two videos intended to introduce you to the topic of groundwater problems. In the first video, the video that you're watching right now, we'll talk about groundwater depletion. And then in the next video, we'll talk about groundwater contamination. As we discussed previously, uh, we rely heavily on groundwater resources for a source of drinking water and irrigation water. If the rate at which we pump water out of an aquifer exceeds the rate at which that aquifer recharges, then groundwater storage is depleted. Over time, groundwater depletion can cause the level of water in an aquifer to drop. This can cause a lot of problems, including causing wells to go dry, uh, reduction of water in streams and lakes where those surface water bodies are fed by groundwater discharge, increased pumping costs because you have to pump the water further to get it up to the surface, and uh, can actually cause the land surface to subside where water pressures essentially are helping to hold up the land surface. So the concept is uh, relatively simple. If the rate at which water, uh, groundwater is being pumped out is greater than the rate of recharge, then aquifer storage is uh, depleted. Aquifer storage decreases. But the choices of how to deal with this problem uh, are anything but simple. What happens when the well runs dry? If you drill deeper, plant less crops, plant different crops, maybe, move away, find a new way to make a living. Uh, making this more complex, individuals don't decide how to manage this resource. Okay, groundwater resources are shared according to water law. Uh, you might decide to conserve water by irrigating less, but this doesn't necessarily mean that your neighbor will. And it might mean that you have less claim on those water resources in the future. This is a problem that we are facing all around the country in a, in a number of aquifers. Okay, and one of these aquifers is shown that's uh, shown on this map is the High Plains Aquifer. We're going to focus on that in the rest of this video because it's a uh, it's a an example that really hits close to home. Right here's Kansas, right here. Okay, so the High Plains Aquifer underlies a huge area from Texas to South Dakota, all the way across the middle of the U.S. Right. It alone yields 30% of the groundwater used for irrigation water in the United States, which is incredible. 30% out of this one aquifer. Okay. It's also a critical source of drinking water for millions of people. Water from the High Plains aquifer helped expand agriculture in the High Plains and sustain it, uh, helps sustain it during droughts. This image is intended to give you a visual of that. Uh, it shows cir circular crop fields in southwest Kansas. You can see these uh, circular fields in places where we water our crops using center pivot irrigation. Southwestern Kansas was right in the heart of the Dust Bowl, which was uh, brought on in part uh, by an intense drought in the 1930s. Use of irrigation water from the High Plains Aquifer since then has been part of the reason why we've been able to prevent those conditions from returning and maintain uh, agriculture during drought. It's helped us really um, sustain the agriculture at a high level. Unfortunately, groundwater levels in the aquifer have been on the decline since the 1940s when we started using the aquifer as a source of irrigation water. Uh, this slide summarizes some of the findings from a study published last year by Dr. Stewart and co-authors in civil engineering at K-State. Uh, the title of uh, an article that he published with those co-authors is Tapping Unsustainable Groundwater Stores for Agricultural Production in the High Plains Aquifer of Kansas. Projections to 2110. And this, uh, this article was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences last year, which is a very highly res respected uh, scientific journal. According to their findings, about 30% of the groundwater from the aquifer 
in Kansas has already been pumped and nearly 40 percent will be depleted over the next 50 years given the current trends. Uh, the amount of water recharging the aquifer only equals about 15 percent of the current pumping rates. So that right there is why the aquifer is being depleted relatively quickly. Inflow is much smaller than uh, outflow. So as a result, the aquifer is being depleted. They estimate that it would take about 500 to 1500 years to refill the uh, depleted aquifer. Okay, so these numbers are not pretty. Uh, Western Kansas and uh, much of the High Plains relies heavily on agriculture. That's the basis of the local economies there. Because this agriculture is currently buoyed up by groundwater from the High Plains aquifer, something has to change or those economies are going to be severely impacted as the aquifer is depleted and we can no longer pump at the same rate. Okay, we're just going to eventually hit the wall, right? Well, some, uh, some farmers in Kansas are trying to be proactive about this and are working together to help extend the life of the aquifer. Okay, so let's listen to this uh, story by National Public Radio about the, the, uh, these farmers' effort to help make the aquifer last longer. Across the high plains, from Nebraska to Texas, farmers depend on water from vast underground aquifers to grow their crops. But that pool of water is shrinking, putting entire towns at risk. In one small section of northwestern Kansas, all the farmers have now agreed to pump less water out of the ground. As NPR's Dan Charles reports, the agreement is unprecedented and fragile. Hoxie, Kansas is the kind of place where people keep track of how many children go to the town's school. It's a barometer of the town's chances of survival. I don't know, when I was in high school, we had 36 to 42 kids in every class. This is Mitchell Bauman, a farmer, 38 years old. Now these classes are down to 15, probably 10 to 15 in a class. But things have been turning around lately, Bauman says. There are more kids in the younger grades. There are a few more jobs keeping families around. We're driving down Highway 24 with a semi-trailer filled with 25 tons of corn. We'll be taking it to a Hoxie feed yard over here, feed 60,000 head of cattle. Corn and cattle are what bring money into Hoxie, and those businesses are built on water. Rain makes grain. I mean, we, we are in an arid climate. We've been averaging, I think, 18 inches of rain a year. That's enough rainfall to grow a modest corn crop, but not a big one. And sometimes the rains don't come at all. So farmers here pump water from the aquifer. Irrigation rigs called pivots spread it across circles of land half a mile in diameter. Each cornfield like this has been getting about 50 million gallons of water every year. We always just took it for granted that that water was just going to be there. Well, now like, we're kind of thinking, hey, we're, we're starting to think about these things. A few years ago, officials in Kansas who monitor the groundwater situation came to the farmers of Hoxie and they said, the water table here in your area is falling fast. They drew a line around an area covering 99 square miles west of town and called together the farmers in that area, about 100 of them, for a series of meetings. They told the farmers, if you pump less water, it'll stay there. You'll have more later. Now, there have been other places on the High Plains where government officials have proposed cutbacks in irrigation. And farmers usually treated it like a declaration of war. Ray Lumen, who works for the Groundwater Management District that includes Hoxie, says you can understand why. Many of them feel like that, that water right or the right to use that water is it's their lifeblood. It's also their property. It's not clear the government can legally tell them to use less of it. But in Hoxie, the conversation took a different turn. Some influential farmers, including Mitchell Bauman, pushed for everybody to pump less water. Bauman talked about his four children, how he wanted to preserve the water for them. And he talked about the town, how much it depends on irrigated agriculture. So it would be better for the town to manage that water, to keep it flowing in the future. We are wanting to keep people moving back, keep our businesses going in our downtowns, in these little towns, our restaurants. Last fall, the farmers of Hoxie did something unprecedented. They agreed to pump 20% less water over the next five years. The state government then made it a formal requirement. State officials will check the water meters on each pump to make sure it happens. 
Scott Foote, who runs Hoxie Feed Yard, the biggest business in town, says the key to what happened in Hoxie was the community. It was a lot of neighbors got together that know each other, personally go to church with each other, and kids go to school with each other, and, and honestly, it's just a very tight-knit community. But remember, this agreement is just for five years. It's like a trial period. And the big question is, will the farmers stick with this? Mitchell Bauman certainly wants them to. I'm going to fight hard that we renew it. I mean, it's, it's my farm, my name at stake, and I don't want to sound selfish like this, but I don't want to let my kids down. We've got a great, great core of youth in Sheridan County, Thomas County. I don't want to let them down. But there are farmers here who are not quite so sure about this water saving agreement. I found one who's dead set against it. Well, let's go down the road here a little bit further, and I'll show you something about how arbitrary this is. Kevin Wark lives half an hour from Hoxie, but he has one field just inside the border of the area where you can't pump as much water, and he shows it to me. I resent being in this territory. We've been taking basically roughly 50% of our value of crops we can grow for the next five years away from us. So how's that fair to me with the guy across the road that can just keep doing it, what he's been doing? Wark says he thought about fighting the restrictions in court, but he decided not to. Nobody in Hoxie seemed willing to join him. Another farmer, Gary Ma, says he supports the agreement for now, but he's really waiting to see if farmers in other parts of western Kansas are ready to do something similar. We don't want to be the only ones using less water. He says it wouldn't be fair. I think if nobody else is jumping on board, I think maybe a lot of people are going to say, we're not doing anything again. We're just hurting ourselves. So here's the paradox. This agreement to pump less water only happened because it was small, just a conversation among neighbors who cared about their town. But it may not survive unless it gets much bigger, with farmers pumping less water all across the High Plains aquifer. Dan Charles. NPR News. You're listening to All Things Considered from NPR News. So obviously, obviously this is a very difficult issue, um, very complicated, going to be uh, important to make progress in this area, but uh, not going to be easy. Okay, so putting all this together, it's clear that the status of the High Plains Aquifer is very important to the future of Kansas and other uh, places in the High Plains. Uh, this wraps up this portion of the lecture, but before you start the next portion, I want you to watch the short video that's linked here through NBC Learn. Uh, the title of the video is Sustainability Water, the Oglala Aquifer. The Oglala Aquifer is part of the High Plains Aquifer. It's, it's most of the High Plains Aquifer. So a lot of times you hear people use the, the two uh, terms somewhat synonymously. This video does a great job of talking about the problem and the science going into finding a solution. So I definitely want you to watch this. It will help reinforce some of the material I've covered here and you will uh, be responsible for that content. Okay, so here's the note about the Ogallala Aquifer name. Okay, so let me just show you. So if you go to the website, www.nbclearn.com slash water, and then it's right here. So you just click on that link and you'll be able to watch the video. And in case that wraps up our discussion of uh, groundwater depletion, thank you for watching. <laughs>